Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Ahead, Mr. Dillon. He said to tell you he'd meet you there. From what you say, there isn't much use for either one of us, Chester. No, sir. Poor old Mr. Sawyer. He looked long dead to me. Right in his office, huh? Yes, sir. That's where the boy found him. Looked like he pulled a chair into the middle of the room and stood on it. Hanging sure is a bad way to die, ain't it? I guess when a man wants to kill himself, it doesn't matter much how he does it. No, sir. How come there's no crowd outside? Well, I told the boy to go on home not to talk to anybody. Oh, good. And then I went in, cut Mr. Sawyer down, and come looking for you and Doc. Uh-huh. The uh, door wasn't locked, huh? No, sir. Hello, Matt. Well, I guess you're too late this time, Doc. Yes, an hour anyway. I don't understand it, Matt. Sawyer was doing fine in his hide business. He yeah. didn't have any problems at all that I know of. Maybe it was his wife dying, Doc. Oh, no, no. That was a year ago, Chester. He'd got used to that. Maybe he hadn't. Maybe he was just saving it all up for this. Well, we'll never know now. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? When, uh, when you found him, was, uh, that chair where it is now? Yes, sir. It ain't been moved, Mr. Dillon. He stood on it and then kicked it over, just like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Bad way to die. I sure wouldn't ever try it, Doc. Well, I hope not, Chester. No, what, what I mean is, supposing you kick the chair out from under you and then change your mind. Oh, wouldn't that be fearsome? Probably happens to a lot of suicides, Chester. Uh, Doc. Oh, yes, Matt. Are there any bruises on him? Well, I don't know, Matt. I haven't looked. Uh, let me see. Uh, of course, hanging doesn't bruise, but... Wait, no, wait a minute. See, there is a lump here. On the back of his head. Now, how do you get that? Sawyer always kept a tin box over in that cabinet, Doc. What's that got to do with this lump on his head? He kept his ready cash in that box. It's not there now. You mean somebody stole it? Now, who'd do that? Whoever walked in here hit him in the head and hoisted him up on that rope. I knew old Sawyer pretty well. He wasn't the kind of a man who'd kill himself. By heaven, I think you're right, Matt. He didn't have any enemies. Whoever did this is going to be mighty hard to find. bunch of mourners at the burying today, wasn't it, Mr. Dillon? Well, I guess people kind of shy away from suicides, Chester. Mm, poor old man, Sawyer. Seems pretty mean letting everybody go on believing he went and hung himself. He won't mind, Chester. But if the man who killed him thinks he got by with it, he just might get careless. Mm, yes, sir, he might. Hey, 
Who's that Miss Kitty's walking with? I don't know. She's right pretty. For Dodge. Yeah. Uh, but, Chester, I wouldn't put it exactly that way to her if I were you. Oh, well, I didn't mean nothing by it. I, I would Oh, Matt. Chester. Oh, Miss Kitty. How are you, Kitty? Cora, I'd like you to meet Marshall Dillon and Chester Proudfoot. This is Cora Bell. How do you do? How do you do? Peter, if you ever come around to the Long Branch, you'd have met Cora a week ago. Well, we've been pretty busy, Kitty. Oh, sure. I hope I'll see you over there soon, Marshal. And you too, Chester. Oh, I'll, I'll be there, Miss Cora. Even tonight, maybe. Good. My. Kitty, I promised Mel I'd meet him at Delmonico's. I'd better hurry along. Uh, I'll see you tonight. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye-bye. Matt, bye. you know who this Mel is she's meeting? No. Huh? Mel Tucker. Well, uh, Mel Tucker? That no good slack jawed water. They're in love, Chester. Love, my friend. Wild in love. Oh. Ever since they met a week ago. I just can't believe it. About her, I mean. Yeah, sometimes there's no accounting for women, Chester. Uh, heard Mel Tucker used to be something of a man, Matt. Hey, he still carries a gun. Well, that's not exactly what I meant. Oh, I guess he was all right. Before the whiskey took it out of him. One thing, he's crazy jealous. About the worst I've ever seen. Oh, well, he ought to be. She got a look at a good man, she might come to her senses. How'd they get started, Kitty? Oh, Mel Tucker was over in Newton. And when he got on the Santa Fe for Dodge, Cora was on it, too. They're even talking of getting married, mm. Matt. Do you think they will? As soon as Tucker gets hold of some money, they will. And it won't be very soon. That man's been broke for three years. I don't know, Chester. A man like Tucker might do anything for money. Mr. Dillon, you... You ain't thinking... We'll wait and see, Chester. It's all we can do. You've heard Bobby Haggard whistling it on radio and television. Right now, a country-style version. Okay, partners? Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, as an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Look, now there's something I've been looking for, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what? Over here in the store window. Huh? Look, Mr. Jonas finally got them in, see? Oh, you mean those paper collars and cuffs? No, no, them boot jacks. Oh. <laughs> Pretty fancy. Yeah, they're metal, Mr. Dillon. And they cost three dollars. You could make one of your own with ten cents worth of wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but these is iron. They last forever. Chester, wait a minute. Look inside there. Hmm? Right at the counter there. Why, with it. Why, it's Mel Tucker. And look at that pile of stuff he's bought. Yeah. And look at the cash he's paying for it with. Mr. Dillon, you really think he did it? I'm going to try to find out. How? Oh, he's coming out now. Yeah, I guess he's going to pick up his stuff later. You'll need a wagon. Oh, Tucker. Oh. Hello, Marshal. I, uh, notice you're buying a lot of new clothes. 
You getting married? <laughs> yeah, I sure am, Marshal. Right soon. Going after Cora now. Buy her some stuff. Well, that's fine. I didn't know you were working. Well, I'm not. Not here in Dodge. Uh-huh. I made me some money over Newton, Marshal. You did? Yeah. How? Well, I don't see as it's anybody's business how, Marshal. You will after you've been in jail a while. Jail? What are you talking about? Old man Sawyer was murdered, Tucker, and I happen to know that you did it. You out of your head? I got all the proof I need. You're a liar. The judge won't think so. Well, you can't arrest me, Marshal. It, it, it ain't right. Might go easier on you if you'd admit it, Tucker. I ought to kill you. You couldn't and you know it. Now start walking. You know where the jail is. <laughs> Just killing a little time, Matt, so if you're busy... You no, can no, 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 no. Sit down, sit down. There's nothing going on here. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, where's Chester? <laughs> He's probably overworking on Mr. Jonas again. Jonas? Well, what for? Yeah, that metal boot jack. Chester won't pay more than a dollar, and Jonas is holding up for two fifty. It's been going on like that for a week. Well, ever since you threw Mel Tucker in jail, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. He has show any signs of weakening, Matt? Now he won't admit a thing, Doc. Mm -hmm. Cora been to see him? Mm Mm-hmm, every day. But uh, that's beginning to work on Tucker. What is? Uh, Being in jail, he can't ride herd on her the way he's been doing. Kitty was right. He's a mighty jealous man. You still think he did it, Matt? Yeah, I do. It looks like I'm going to have a hard time proving it. Mm, You sure? Hey, Mr. Dillon, have you... Oh, Oh. hello, Doc. Just him. Don't see any boot jack, Chester. Never mind that. You better get on over to Bob Randall's freight office. Huh? What for? Autopsy, I guess. He's dead, Doc. What happened, Chester? Well, sir, I was walking by his office, and his wife went out and said she dropped by to see him and found him hanging there. Hanging? Just like old man Sawyer. Exact same thing. I went in and cut him down. This time I took a look around. He'd been hit on the head all right, and somebody tried to open his safe. They didn't get nothing, but they'd sure been working on him. Well, Matt... Wait here a minute, Doc. I'll go over with you. Marshal, when are you going to give up and leave me out of here? You're out, Tucker. You mean it? Yeah. I made a mistake about you. <laughs> I've been telling you that. What finally changed your mind? What do you care? You're free. Now get going. Get married. Do anything you want. Yeah, I sure will. Just tell you one thing, Marshal. What? I ain't gonna forget what you've done to me. I'm already thinking up how to pay you back someday. I said get out of here, Tucker. Kitty? No. Sit down, man. Uh, What's on your mind? Oh, plenty. You didn't enjoy having to turn Mel Tucker loose yesterday, did you? Yeah, there wasn't anything else I could do, Kitty. Uh, you've made mistakes before, Matt. You don't usually take it so hard. Kitty, Mel Tucker's perfectly capable of having killed old man Sawyer. But he sure didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I gotta do my hunting like a lion in a tree. Just lie still and wait. And you don't like that, do you? <laughs> I've done enough of it, Kitty. I know. Well, I'll say one thing about Mel Tucker, Matt. A week in jail sure made a change in him. Oh, what do you mean? He's been meek as a lamb since he got out. About what? About Cora. Look at them. All three of them standing at the bar over there. Real friendly like. Who's that other man? Oh, that's Dan Dressler. He and Cora have been together a lot lately. 
Oh? Well, where'd he come from? I don't know. He rode into town a day or so after you threw Tucker in jail. Maybe Tucker doesn't know about Cora and him, huh? They're just friends. They act like a big, happy family, Matt. I see. Uh, Tucker and Cora still planning on getting married? Well, not for a while. Cora says they're broke. Broke? Uh-huh. With $300? Who's got $300? Mel Tucker. It's what he had when I jailed him. It's what I returned to him yesterday. Well, that doesn't make sense, does it? Maybe it does, Kitty. Uh, look, will you do something for me? What? It won't be easy, and it'll make you look pretty bad. Then it must be important or you wouldn't ask me to do it. It is, Kitty. You see that table over there in the corner, just inside the hallway? Yes, yeah, sure. I want you to get Cora and Tucker and this dressler over there. Offer to buy him a drink or something, huh? And then what? Let's go out back before they happen to see us. I'll tell you there. Are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your kitchen? Getting ready for Sunday supper? Maybe in your living room, relaxing? Or out for a pleasant drive? Say, how's the scenery out your way? This is the first weekend of spring, you know. Of course, you'll enjoy all of spring's pleasure more with Chesterfield. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. A more perfectly packed cigarette gives you an open, easy draw that unlocks all the better taste and mildness of fine tobaccos. And Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, is more perfectly packed, with an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Remember, to the touch to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Buy Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy the most. Try to stop anything like that, Chester. Look, I'm going to get closer. You wait and then follow me, huh? Yes, sir. Appreciate your buying us all a drink, Kitty, but I don't know why you're doing it. Kitty's a nice girl, man. Not enough reason? Yeah, I guess so. Most people I know don't do nothing for you without wanting something out of it. No, Chester's yeah. right, Carl. What? I'm not a nice girl. There's something I want. There, you see, I told you. What do you want, Kitty? I want Mel Tucker to know about you and Dan Dressler. To know about me and Dan Dressler? I don't like to watch a man being made a fool of, the way you're doing to Tucker. What are you talking about? Oh, now, now. You better explain yourself, Kitty. I will, Tucker. You think Dan Dressler's a friend, don't you? Go on, keep talking. (laughs) Well, he's a friend, all right. But Cora's friend, not yours. They were out together every night. You were in jail and every day, too. That's a lot. Shut up, leave her talk, Dressler. Everybody in Dodge knows what they've been doing except you. I guess I'm the only person that's not afraid to tell you. You think she's in love with you? Kitty! Get up, Dressler. Oh, wait a minute, Tucker. 
You ain't going to listen to that fool. You're going to get up or I'm going to shoot you right there. No, Mel, it's a now, crack. Corey, you shut up. Out. You better stop it, Mr. Dean. I can't, Chester, not yet. All right, Dressler. I paid you to hang Bob Randall. I didn't pay you to make love to my girl. All right, that's it. Get up now, fool, Tucker. That's enough, Tucker. He was going to shoot Coro, Matt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get Tucker's gun. Yes, sir, I will. Dressler dead, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. You sure walloped Tucker a good one? No, it was going to kill me. The marshal hadn't hit him. He'd have killed me. I'm sorry I had to do it, Carl. No, he's going to kill me. He shouldn't have been jealous of me. He shouldn't have been jealous of me. Cora, you hired Dan Dressler to hang Randall, didn't you? Mel made me do it. But you're an accomplice. I only did what Mel told me. It wasn't my idea. I didn't murder the man. I loved Mel. I had to do it. I loved him. I loved him. And it's just too bad you loved him, Cora. Because now you're as guilty as he is. Come on. moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, on the frontier, a newcomer could almost always find some land and a little water to build himself a ranch. But next week, trouble comes to Dodge when two men claim title to the same area. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Virginia Gregg, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Smokers, this is it. L and M filters. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Relax with L and M. So good to your taste, so quick on the draw. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.